Hi everyone, I am Ruz Bashar. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to use DDL statements in a SQL transaction. But before we get started, please make sure to subscribe by clicking on the button below this video if you haven't already. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this video, I am going to show you how to use DDL statements in a SQL transaction. Many SQL developers assume that transactions can only be used with DML commands. This is not true and you can use many DDL statements in SQL transactions as well. I'll be using the previous video example to show how to use DDL statements in a SQL transaction. So if you have not seen my previous tutorial, I recommend you to watch it first. Well, you remember from the previous video that we got to the point where the database went into an unstable state. The reason for this was that the method we used was something like trial and error, so before we got to the final answer, we experienced errors that caused the database to become unstable. This is the SQL script that we used at a specific stage in the example. As you can see in the first command, we temporarily delete the foreign key so that we can proceed with the next commands. And at the end of the SQL script, we try to recreate the foreign key where we encounter a problem because at this stage, the data type between the primary key and the foreign key are not the same. Therefore, the execution of the whole script is incomplete and the database gets to an unstable state. That is not what we intend. We want the whole SQL script to succeed or fail as a unit. It cannot be complete partially. This is where a SQL transaction comes into play to avoid such a situation. Now let's look at how we can make improvement to this script by wrapping it in a SQL transaction. First, a SQL transaction in SQL Server starts with this statement. Following it comes your SQL script. If the script runs successfully, you want to complete the transaction by issuing the following command. Otherwise, you undo the changes by issuing. To determine if an error has occurred, you usually use try catch block, which is the error handling mechanism. So, in conjunction with SQL transaction, you will have the following. We can polish it a little more to give us more information in case of an error. Now let's replace this part with our SQL script and execute it to see what the result would be. You can see that the script was unsuccessful and the transaction has rolled back but it doesn't provide us with the detailed information about error. If you want to get the exact information on the error from the stack trace, you need to raise the code exception in the catch block. To this end, you have to use true statement as the last one. Note that the statement before throw must be followed with a semicolon. You can make sure that no changes have been made to the database by checking the primary key and foreign key columns in the associated tables. As the last step, let's replace the commands in the try block with the final version of the script and see the result. Now you see that transaction is complete with no error. And both primary key and foreign key have changed accordingly. That's all for now. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. 
Thanks for watching.